What's up guys, Rosh here, and welcome to another episode of Common Climate Claims, a series in which we look at some of the dumbest yet most frequently used claims made about climate change. Last week we demonstrated why the fact that the climate has always changed isn't the gotcha argument that many seem to think it is, but this week we'll be looking at the claim that global warming stopped or paused at some point. Of the arguments we've looked at to date, this is the first to have some degree of scientific merit to it, but unfortunately not enough to make it a good argument. It's still pretty dumb. So did global warming stop? No. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye. Okay, so I'm not going to end the video just yet, as there's still plenty of science that we can get stuck into. The claim that global warming is over has fallen out of fashion among the sceptic community of late, possibly because of the constant onslaught of record-breaking heat we've had over recent years. Possibly. But only a few years ago, this was a very common claim, and I would put money on it making a resurgence at the first hint that global temperatures begin to level off. Because that's pretty much the basis of this argument. As soon as it looks like there have been a few years without any obvious upward trend in temperature, you can bet that someone will announce an end to global warming. Of course, the trouble with this is that a few years of data are not sufficient to draw long-term trends about the climate. Whether the world is cooling or warming, global temperature trends will never occur in a perfectly straight line. There will be short periods where there is no discernible trend at all, and there will be even shorter periods when the trend might even appear to reverse. And this is because of something called natural variability. Even when the climate is stable, global temperatures will fluctuate from year to year as heat energy moves around the system. There are a whole bunch of factors which affect this short-term variability, including El Nino southern oscillation, volcanic eruptions or solar cycles. All of these can have dramatic effects on the climate over the short term, but once they are over, their effects dissipate. So a stable climate will still look kind of spiky. The trend line will just be flat. When the climate warms, these natural processes don't miraculously cease to exist. They still exert short-term influence on global temperatures. So what you end up with is a spiky line superimposed on an upwards warming trend. Some years will be hotter, and others will be cooler. But overall, the average temperature will increase. This is exactly what we see throughout the 20th century. But then, in 1998, we saw a particularly hot year. This was largely driven by an exceptionally strong El Nino, which, as we discussed, is an example of short-term variability. Once the El Nino dissipated, global temperatures dropped back down again and resumed their upward trend. However, because 1998 was so exceptionally warm, it took several years before global temperatures surpassed that level. And so between 1998 and about 2012, give or take, the global temperature trend appeared to be relatively flat. This was the time that climate skeptics loudly proclaimed that global warming had stopped. They also claimed that, because of this trend, climate scientists dropped the term global warming in favour of the term climate change, but I've addressed that argument in another video. Now, there are a whole bunch of problems with this proclamation. The first is the obvious. You can't draw long-term climate trends from such limited data. Plus, you know, the warming trend has very much resumed. There's a great graphic from Skeptical Science which exposes the stupidity of this reasoning by demonstrating that if we cherry-pick the data, we could show that there was no warming trend in any decade since the 1970s. Of course, if we draw a long-term trend through these periods of no warming, we get a very obvious warming trend throughout. However, there is another major flaw with this argument, and that's that the temperature data which shows this apparent pause in warming is only for the surface of the Earth. The problem with this should become apparent to anyone who's ever seen a map of the Earth. Let's use the one behind me to demonstrate. What would you say was the dominant colour of that map? Now, apologies to those of you who are colourblind, which statistically is like 1 in 20 of you, probably more since most of you guys are male. But yeah, the dominant colour is dark blue, and that's because 70% of the Earth's surface is ocean. Studies suggest that as much as 90% of the extra heat from global warming has been absorbed by the oceans, so when we look at global warming trends, we have to look at ocean heat content too. And when we do that, there's a clear warming trend throughout the period in which surface temperatures appeared to level off. 
Remember, global warming implies two different things. The first is a discernible increase in average global temperatures. That means we have to look at the whole planet, not just the surface, but the oceans and atmosphere too. And the second is that this trend occurs over a long period of time, so we have to look at the whole world over several decades. If we do both of these things, there is absolutely no indication that global warming has ever stopped, at least not since it began however many decades ago. The fact that skeptics have to cherry pick their data to support this claim, often using a single dataset and only looking at a period of about 15 years, should reveal exactly how intellectually dishonest this claim is. The most common dataset they use is this one from RSS, Remote Sensing Systems, which I addressed in my Richard Lindzen video. It is the only global dataset which doesn't show at least some warming for the period shown, and later research revealed that, due to errors in accounting for the satellite orbit, RSS had actually been underestimating warming during this time. Now, many skeptics claim that temperature data is deliberately manipulated to show warming where there is none, but that's a claim for another video. But anyway, that's it for today guys. What do you think? Have you come across this argument? Do you think it'll make a comeback at the next temperature plateau? What other arguments would you like me to cover? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more of my content, then don't forget to like, comment, and smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.